فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم That's all he's doing. Night time now is يقوم النهار لا يقوم الليل قيام الليل long ركعات long آيات he will read بالتأني والتروي calmness and collective that person is the first person you become jealous of the second one is a person Allah gave him money and he's using that money for what? for what you'll fiqh anna and laylu anna and nahar day and night he's giving it out and you see him and you say oh Allah I wish I had that money as well so I can give it out like he's giving it out and give it to the poor and those who are in need so I can benefit the ummah and the community like he's benefiting it Allah don't take it away from him but I wish I could have something like that are you with me? Those are the two people you should have jealousy of, hey? Narrated by Abu Bakari and Muslim. The same hadith is narrated by Abu Abdullah Abdul, Abdul ibn Mas'ud with different wordings. Envy is prohibited except in two. So here the hadith is more version. La hasad illa fitnataini. Hasad is not except in two. Huh? Hasad is only in two, hey? A man whom Allah has blessed with wealth and causes him to spend it in his way. So a person, this person's got money. He can't hold the money. Some people, Allah has just made them like that. They get money, that same day the guy's money is all gone. What for what like him? For their own usage? No. They give it out to people. People are gonna take it from them. Second is what? And a man upon whom Allah has bestowed wisdom in this context of Quran. So that he both so that he both judges by it and teaches it. Yeah, this time the Prophet ﷺ referred to it as hikmah, wisdom. The Qur'an is wisdom. The Qur'an is what? Wisdom. وَرَجُلٌ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ حِكْمَةً Allah gave him wisdom, hikmah. So the person who's got the Qur'an is a wise person. He's wise, hakim. Okay? فَوَيَقْضِي بِهَا He's judging the people based on the Qur'an. He's not judging them on his own whims and desires. He's not judging them based on I think and I assume. No, based on the Qur'an. وَيُعَلِّمَهَا and he's teaching the people the Quran. He's spreading the knowledge of the Quran. Are you? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu also narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever recites a single letter from the Book of Allah the Almighty will be granted a reward for that. And that reward will in turn be multiplied ten times. I do not say that. Alif la meem is a letter. Rada, Alif is a letter, and Lam is a letter, and Meem is a letter. Narrated by a Tirmidhi who classified it as Hassan Sahih. Here the author Rahimullah brings the hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that the Prophet he said, Man qara'a harfan min kitabillah, anyone who reads a letter from the Quran, falahu hasanatun, he has a reward for that. Wal hasanatu bi ashri amtariha. And it's then that reward is multiplied by ten. Allahu Akbar. Then the Prophet said, I won't say any flam meme is a what? It's not a harf. It's not a word. Or it's not a letter. Alif is a letter by itself. The lamb is a letter by itself. The meme is a letter by itself. How many letters have you just read? 30 in total. That's the reward of it. I ask you guys a question. This is a discussion that many people don't know that's going on amongst the ulama. Okay, alif, lamb, and meme. We get that each one is 10 rewards, so that's how much? 30. What about words that have one meaning? Because Alif Lam Mim, we don't know the meaning, right? No. Sah? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Yes. What about if we turned Alif Lam Mim here, we said Alam. Alam Tara, Alam. Alam. Is Alam Alif Lam Mim the same as this, or is it Alam? One reward. In other words, when the Prophet said, "La man qara harfan min kitab Allah," did the Prophet mean حروف الهجائية or did he mean حروف المعاني? Words that have meaning. Because it's حروف المعاني and حروف المباني, right? We took that in grammar, ajrumi, right? There's حروف المعاني and there's حروف مباني. حروف المباني means letters, alif, ba. Ta, that's huruf al that's huruf al mabani. Huruf al maani are words that harf that means a meaning. Min is one word. It's a harf. Ila is a harf. 
an is a harf. So when the Prophet said man qara'a harfan min kitabillah, does the Prophet mean here harf as in mabani or ma'ani? Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymi said it's huruf al ma'ani. Alam is ten, it's one reward. It's sorry, it's ten reward, sorry. It's not thirty reward. Alam, it's just ten reward, it's one word, it's a harf. An is one word. It's ten. Are you with me? The ones that don't have a meaning like alif lam meem. Saad, Ain, Sin, Qaf. He said those are each one reward. Each a reward. Ain is a reward by itself. The Sin is a reward by itself. The Qaf is a reward by itself. That's 30. Because those are called Hurufu. Those are, those are letters. So we break them down since we don't know what they mean. Right? Is that right? Shaykhullah Shaykh Abdul Kareem Khudair he said Allah's mercy is greater than Ibn Taymi's knowledge. Shaykh Abdul Kareem Khudair said, Allah's mercy is greater than Shaykh Hussam Taymi's knowledge. We'll say, no, Alif Lam, Alam Tara, Alam, inshaAllah, Ta'ala is 30. Yeah, Tara, we'll say that's, 30, that's 20. And we do it like that. Allah's mercy is greater for him to give us just 10 for that lap. So, so that's the best response, hey? This hadith scholars have spoken and discussed the authenticity of this hadith and whether it is and it's closer to not being authentic. Hey, yeah? Narrated by Al-Tirmidhi who classed it Hassan. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the one who has nothing of the Qur'an in his heart is like a ruined meaning deserted or abandoned house narrated by At-Tirmidhi who classified it as Hassan Sahih on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As ibn al-As radiallahu anhu the Prophet وسلم, said, It will be said to those who have memorized the Quran in the hereafter, recite the Quran and elevate and recite as you used to recite in the worldly life. For indeed, your dwelling place will be at the last verse you recite. Narrated by Abu Dawood and At Tirmidhi and Nasai and was classified by At Tirmidhi as Hassan, Hassan Sahih. On the authority of Ma'a. The author is Rahu Abu Dawood. Abu Dawood's name is Sulaiman ibn al-Ash'ath. Al-Tirmidhiyu and al-Nasa'iyu. Nasa'iyu's name is Abu Abdul Rahman Ahmad ibn Shu'aib. Naam. On the authority of Ma'az ibn Anas radiallahu anhu, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever recites the Quran and practices it in accordance to it, Allah will adorn each of his parents with a crown on the day of judgment that is brighter than the brightness of the sun in the houses of the world. What then do you imagine the reward of he who practices the Quran? This hadith, rahim, this hadith of Bu'ad ibn Anas anhu, the strongest opinion is that it's weak. That the person who reads the Quran and implements what's in it, then his parents will be placed, a, 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 a crown will be placed on their head, the day of judgment, and then it, it would shine more than the shining of the sun in a, in fi buyuti dunya in the house of this world then what do you believe what then what do you think of the one who implements this this hadith the muhaqqiqin of ulama al hadith they weakened it now al darimi the authority al name is abu muhammad abu muhammad abdullah ibn abdul rahman and he is attributed to a place called darim uh, so he's, sorry, he's attributed to darim which is the Qabil, the tribe of his grandfather. Narrates on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu 
that the Prophet said, Read the Quran, for indeed Allah the Exalted will not punish a heart that holds the Quran. This Quran is the banquet of Allah, and so whosoever takes of it will be safe and secure and give glad tidings to those who love the Quran. So the word ma'duba could be said, ma'daba, both ways are correct. As Al Imam Abu Ubaid al Harawi, Rahimullah, Abu Ubaid Qasim Salam, mentioned in his Kitab Gharib al Hadith. It can, be, it can be written in two ways. You can say ma'duba, banquest. Or you can say ma'daba, both ways. Are you? Abdul Hamid al Hammani said. Al Hammani. Hammani said. I asked Sufyan al Thawri. His name is Sufyan ibn Sa'id ibn Mazruq, Masruq al Thawri, rahimahullah. Which of, the, which of the two he deemed better? He who fights in the cause of Allah. So this person is Mujahid. Mujahid is fighting in the cause of Allah. Which was better, him or? He who recites the Quran. So who's better, the one who reads the Quran or the one who fights in the cause of Allah? Which was better? And he said? He replied, he who recites the Quran. The one who recites the Quran is better to him, says Sufyan al-Thawri. Why? As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you is he, is he who learns the Quran and teaches it. So this is what? The best amongst you. There's nothing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned better than it. الباب الثاني في ترجيح القراءة والقارئ على غيرهما ثبت عن أبي مع ثبت عن أبي مسعود الأنصاري البدري رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يا أم القوم أقرأهم لكتاب الله رواه مسلم وعن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال كان القراء أصحاب مجلس عمر رضي الله عنه ومشاورته كهولا كانوا أو شبانا رواه البخاري في صحيحه وسيأتي في الباب بعد هذا أحاديث تدخل في هذا الباب وعلم أن المذهب المختار الذي عليه من يعتمد عليه من العلماء أن قراءة القرآن أفضل من التسبيح وال من التسبيح والتهليل وغيرهما من الأذكار وقد تظاهرت الأدلة على ذلك الباب الثالث في إكرام أهل القرآن والنهي عن إيذائهم قال الله عز وجل ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب وقال تعالى ومن يعظم حرمات الله فهو خير له عند ربه وقال تعالى واخفض جناحك للمؤمنين وقال تعالى والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا وفي الباب حديث عن أبي مسعود الأنصاري رضي الله عنه وحديث ابن عباس المتقدمان في الباب الثاني وعن أبي مسعود وعن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن من إجلال الله تعالى إكرام ذي الشيبة المسلم وحامل القرآن غير الغالي فيه والجافي عنه وإكرام ذي السلطان المقصط رواه أبو داود وهو حديث حسن وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت أمرنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن ننزل الناس منازلهم رواه أبو داود في سننه والبزار في مسنده قال الحاكم أبو عبد الله قال الحاكم أبو عبد الله في علوم الحديث هو حديث صحيح وعن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يجمع بين الرجلين من قتلاء أحد ثم يقول أيهما أكثر أخذا للقرآن فإذا أشير إلى أحدهما قدمه في اللحد رواه البخاري وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن الله عز وجل قال أن الله عز وجل قال من آذى لي وليا فقد آذنته بالحرب رواه البخاري 
وثبت في الصحيحين عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من صلى الصبح فهو في ذمة الله فلا يطلبنكم الله بشيء من ذمته وعن الإمامين الجليلين أبي حنيفة والشافعي رحمهم الله تعالى قالا إن لم يكن العلماء أولياء الله فليس لله ولي وقال الإمام الحافظ أبو القاسم بن عساكر رحمه الله تعالى اعلم يا أخي وفقنا الله وإياك لمرضات وجعل وجعلنا ممن يخشاه ويتقي حق تقاته أن لحوم العلماء مسمومة وعدة الله تعالى في هتك أستار منتقصيه معلومة وأن من أطلق لسانه في العلماء بالثلب ابتلاه الله تعالى قبل موته بموت القلب فليحذر الذين يخالفون فليحذر الذين يخالفون عن أمره أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم. Chapter two. Giving preference to the best recitation and the best reciter over others. So here the author is going to speak about giving precedence to a reciter and the best recitation over everything else. Naam. Aye. Abu Mas'ud al Ansari al Badri radiyallahu anhu. His name is Uqba ibn Amr. According to the Jumhur of the Ulama, he resided in Bat. He resided in in Bada. According to the Jumhur of the Ulama, they say that he resided in Badr, not, not that he participated in the Battle of Badr. I know it says Al Badri. Al Badri, it doesn't mean he participated in the Battle of Badr. It means that he resided in the place of Badr. That's where he resided. You know where the Battle of Badr took place? That's where he used to live. So that's why they call him Badri. That's according to the Jumhur al Ulama. As for Ibn Shihab al Zuhri and Al Imam al Bukhari, both of them they said, no. شهد مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم البدر. He participated with the Prophet in the Battle of Badr. Narrated that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "Those who recite the Quran best are those who should lead the prayers." Narrated by Muslim. So who's going to lead the prayer? يا أم القوم أقرأهم لكتاب الله. The one who's going to lead the people is the one who knows the Quran the most. Not the one who is the most respected in the community or no, no. أقرأهم لكتاب الله. The word that's been used here, يا أم القوم أقرأهم لكتاب الله. ما معنى أقرأهم؟ أقرأهم means the one who can read the best. Meaning his حفظ is highest. His utterance and his articulation of the Quran is also higher. He takes precedence. هيا. What's the best action after Shahadatain brothers? شهد لا إله إلا الله وشهد محمد رسول الله. What is it? In the pillars of Islam, what is it? Salah, right? In Salah, the Hafid is going to lead. He's leading the people in the, in the greatest action in the deen. Salah. If he's going to lead the people in the greatest action after the Shahadatain, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, then he is virtuous and he's noble than anyone else. Is he not? He is. Are you? Ibn Abbas anhu reports, the reciters were the companions of Umar and his consultants regardless of whether they were young or old. Umar did not care whether they were old or young. He did not care. This concept that this person is young, this person is this. Umar Whether they were young or whether they were old, Umar is gathering the ones who he used to consult. He used to take their consultation on board were the people of Quran, Al-Qurra. Whether, whether they were young. Abdullah ibn Umar was sit, uh, ibn Abbas was sitting in his gathering at the age of 15. 15. 16. Ibn Umar ibn Abbas sorry, was sitting, a 16 year old is sitting in the gathering of who? Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar is consulting him in the matters of the Muslims. And he's only 16. Sah? And to Abdurrahman ibn Awfin said, radiallahu anhu, our children is the same age as this boy. How is he sitting with us? Sah? And then what did he, Umar do? He tested them all on the Quran. To see, hey, yeah, this is the reason why I chose Ibn Abbas. So he tested them. And when he tested them, he asked him about, 
ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا He asked him about the surah He asked him What is it that you guys understand from it? Every one of them talked about what they thought And then what did uh, Ibn Abbas said? He said what it means is that قرب موت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم This surah was saying that the Prophet your death is close That's what was in the surah None of them got that out of Surah Al-Nasr Except Ibn Abbas So Umar looked at all of them and he said Wallahi, I have not yet understood from this surah Except that which this boy understood from it Ibn Abbas That's what I understood from it صح? So he got honored and lifted Through the Quran, right? Yeah So if you're young Your voice counts if you know the Quran And you know what it means, what it means. But you have to remember the word Qurra back in those days and what we call Qurra today is a bit different. We call Qurra Mujarrat if a person knows Qiraat. That's what we call a Qurra. And that's the word, that's the usage that is common today. But that time Qurra were what? They were Yuqimuna Hurufa wa Yuqimuna Hududa. They were establishing its letters, they were reading it properly. And they were reading the surah properly and their utterance, utterance of it and the articulation was good. And also they, what they knew was the, the meaning that were in the Qur'an. They knew the tafsir of the Qur'an. With those two they were called Qur'an. Amma just a person who just knows the wording of the Qur'an and he can read it properly. Back at the time of the Salaf was not called the Qari. Lidhalika, Dhabi rahimahullah wrote a book called what? Ma'rifat Qur'an al-Kibar, right? Are you with me? And he mentions who's from the Qur'an al-Kibar, Uthman radiallahu anhu. Uthman, did he just know the Qur'an or knew what, he meant, what it meant? He knew what it meant and the meaning that it was in it. Now, The following chapters will contain various hadiths that also fall under the topic of this chapter. It is worth noticing that the more correct of the scholarly opinions is that the recitation of the Qur'an is better than other forms of remembrance, such as saying, SubhanAllah, and La ilaha illallah. Glory be to Allah, and none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. Chapter 3. So the author here, he says that the chosen opinion is that, and which we rely on, is that the recitation of the Quran is greater and it's better than a tasbih, wa takbir, wa tahmeed. Saying, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Doing tasbih, are you with me, brothers and sisters? Doing tasbih and reading the Quran, which is better? He says that the qawl which is mu'tamad, alati yu'tamadu alayhi min al-ulama, and which is the madhab al-mukhtar, the chosen opinion, is that, is that reading the Quran is better. Naam. Chapter 3. Honoring the people of the Quran and refraining from harming them. Nowadays you find a lot of people, this chapter talks about honoring, ikram al-Qur'ahl al-Qur'ani. Honoring the people of the Quran and staying away from harming them. A lot of people disrespect towards the Quran and the Hufad who memorize the Quran. If a person tells you I've memorized the Quran, that's it. There's respect that you need to give that person. He knows the book of Allah, he's got it. You need to speak to them in a very good fashion, in a very good manner, and respect it. Because what they are holding is the book of Allah. Comes with this respect, honoring. Venerating, glorifying. Now, Allah the Almighty says, and whosoever honors the symbols of Allah, then that is indeed from the piety of the heart. So, uh, this ayah says, وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ Allah. Anyone who honors the symbols of Islam, this person is holding onto the greatest symbols of Islam. What is it? The Quran. فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ. Then this is from the piety of the heart. You need to respect that person. Now, And Allah the Almighty says, And whoever honors the sanctities of Allah, then that is better for him with his Lord. Again, the hurumat, the things that Allah prohibited, you need to see as great and as what? Majestic and stay away from it. And say, no, I can't get anywhere close to that. Disrespecting the qurra, the huffad, is what? Is hurumat illah, the things Allah, is from the sanctities of your Lord. If you fall into that, and you disrespect the hafid, then you have gone against this, or you fell into the sanctities of your Lord, the things that were not meant, you were not meant to fall into. Now, Allah the Almighty also says, and be gentle with the believers. 
the believers in general you have to be gentle with. What do you think of a person who's memorized the Quran? A person who's memorized the Quran is even greater in terms of how, how gentle and how tender and how soft you are towards them. Allah the Almighty further says, those who harm the believing men and the believing women unservedly have indeed borne on themselves a crime of slandering and clear and flag flagrant sin. Anyone who disrespects or who harms, sorry, the believing men and women, then in something they haven't accomplished, something they didn't do. They didn't do this. But you're harming them. And what you need to remember is that you have taken on board a great portion of sins. You've taken on a great amount of sins. Now. The hadith narrated by way of Abu, Mas Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari and Ibn Abbas and that were mentioned in the previous chapter also count as evidence for the etiquette described in this chapter. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said among the means of penetrating Allah is to honor elderly Muslims those who have memorized the Quran and who, who neither exaggerate his recitation nor neglect it and to honor people of authority who judge fairly. The author here says the hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari that the Prophet ﷺ said inna min ijlalillahi ta'ala from honoring Allah, sisters and brothers pay attention to this from honoring Allah. Do you want to honor Allah? Do you want to honor Allah? Venerate Allah? Then honoring Allah is honoring the following people. Ikrami li shaybati al-Muslim. Honoring a Muslim man whose beard has become white or a Muslim woman who's aged. You saw a person who's old aged. White beard. Honoring them, respecting them is respecting Allah. Honoring Allah. Wahamil al qurani and also the one who's carrying the Qur'an. He's carrying the Quran and he's not. He's not. Sheikh Muhammad Shamsuddin, um, Sheikh Muhammad Shamsul Haq Al Abadi, rahimahullah, the Sharih of Sunnah Abi Dawood, Unul Ma'bud. He says that غير الغالي, the word Ghali comes from the word Ghulu, Al Tashadud, wa Mujawazat Al Had, going overboard. This person has memorized the Quran, Hamil al Quran, is carrying the Quran. Ghayr al Ghali, he's not going extreme on it. Okay? One of the ways that going extreme today that we see is that those who do what is known as maqamat. Have you guys heard of maqamat? Those who read the Quran in a, in a, in a, in a music form. Okay? They'll, read, they'll talk about the different maqamat that the Quran has and you know how to. These are wulu. You there? And the type of recitation which you know you find Abdul Basta Abdul Samad do sometimes. Zulu. Like he goes for long and sometimes you feel like he went for coffee, made himself coffee, came back again and he's carrying off from where he left off. The the the, the, the duration between it and a gulu. There's a kitab written by uh Sheikh Bakr ibn Abdullah Abu Zaid. It's called Bid'at al Qurra. Bid'at al Qurra. And he mentions the innovation that the reciters come with, some things that they do. If Allah gave you a beautiful voice, and you read your voice, and it goes in the corners to a maqamat, yeah, that's no problem. Now, you didn't do that, did you? But to observe a particular maqamah, and they say, I'm moving off from this maqamah now, I'm going to go. And you basically, you, your recitation of the Quran is in accordance to a music rhythm that you took from. That's a wulu, that's extreme. Another thing that we all, even me myself, I find it very hard to, to leave off because we were nurtured upon this. We were cultivated upon this. Which is when we read the Quran, we do this with rock all day. This rocking that we do, sah? It's also from the prohibited things. Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid mentions it in, a, in that book, Bid'at al Qurra. Like doing this all day, da, da, da. It's hard because as young children, this is the way we were taught. We used to rock ourselves, sah? Sah? Who finds it hard to stop that? Stop doing that? Who else? Hey, who else? You find it hard? 
Who else finds it hard? From the brothers. Anyone else? Muhammad, hey? I'm sure the rest of you guys do. I can ask again. Who finds it hard to stop rocking? Uh, you said it twice. You want to, you want to say it a lot of times. I, I saw it the first time. Okay. Hey. You don't find it hard? You don't rock? Who felt like when they were studying the Quran, they were, they were rock, they were the teachers, basically, it was all rocking. Uh, you Asians, that's, I think, what I took it on from Somalis, they, they do do that. And then I went to a secondary school in, in Birmingham, uh, Asian school, and they rock like they, 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 their forehead is going to touch the floor. Like, they're, <laughs> yeah, boah, the way they rock is just another level. Sah? It is. MashaAllah. That's another thing that you, this, it falls under. Don't do extreme. Those are all not, nothing, things that you don't need to do. Now, even the qiraat, sometimes when, when tajweed is done, some people they do ghulu in the tajweed. Ghulu. Huh? Like when they're leading the salah, look at their heads, look at their head from the back. Like the way they're doing it, the makharij coming out. Ghayr al ghali fi wal al from the back, you can see the head is moving all over the place because he's trying to get the bad and he's trying to get the ayn out properly and sah and the ghulu. Are you there? All of that is what? Extreme. The person just has to read. Another one is ghulu, which is what? Al-Isra'u fil qira'ah. Those who just read fast. Like fast, you don't know, what did he just say? That is ghulu. It's another form of extreme in reading it. So all of that is something that, if the person does that to the Qur'an, then now it becomes the right of being honored can be, is questioned now. It has to be غَيْرَ الْغَالِفِ وَلَا الْجَافِعَانِ وَإِكْرَامِ السُلْطَانِ الْمُقْسِطِ And also honoring the leader who is just. Yeah. This was narrated by Abu Dawood and this is classified as Hassan. Aisha radiallahu anha said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered us to Place people in their respective positions. Give people their due rights and respect. Abu Dawood narrates this in his Sunnan, and Al Hakim classified it as Sahih in his book, The Sciences of Hadith. <coughs> Here, what we find is Amarana Rasulullah, the Messenger commanded us, alayhi salatu wasalam, had a Amr al Nabawi. It's a prophetic command. What's the command here? And Nunazil al Nasa Manazilam. That we place the people in what? Their rightful position. We place the people in what? Their positions. So the half of the Quran, the station Allah gave him, is that he's honored for his memorization of the Quran. That's the haq that he has. So we place him at that position. We don't take him lower than that position, nor do we raise him above that station. Amarana Rasulullah. Here's a command, the amr. Are you with me, brothers? Amarana Rasulullah, the Messenger commanded us, and Nunazil and Nasa Manazilahum, that we place the people in their rightful, their correct position. We have to. Now. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would bury two martyrs of Uhud together in the same grave and then ask, which of them knew more Quran? And so if one of the two was pointed out, he will place him in front of the other in the grave, narrated by Al Bukhari. When the Battle of Badr took place, the companions they won. Sorry, the Battle of Uhud. Sorry, when if the Battle of Badr. Sorry, when they fought, they won. When the Battle of Uhud came, they lost. Okay, when they lost, a battle just took place. People don't have the strength anymore. Psychologically, they are down because they lost, and the strength is fully gone now. Are you with me, brothers? So they can't bury. They can't dig dig a hole right now and they lost how many 70 companions 70 hole 70 it'll be very hard for them in the heat in the sun to do that is going to be very hard so what did the prophet say he said don't worry take do basically two people will go into the same one but the prophet the way he ordered them to be dug together was what alayhi Two of them will be buried in the same, but he will say, Ayyuhumma akhtaru akhda lil Qur'an. Which of those two knew the Qur'an the most? If what was told this was, he knew the Qur'an, he will place him in front of the other one. 
In front here shows that he's a leader. He's, in, he's ahead of you. So he would base the way he, who he would put first in front, then who would he put at the ending based on how he memorized the Quran. So even when the people are in their graves, the Prophet divided them in the, in the line. They're not, they can't be the same level. They have to be, one has to be in front of the other one. The one has to be in front of the other one. Just like in the Salah, the Imam is the one who's memorized the Quran, he's in front of everyone. And he's the leader of the Muslims. Now. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed Allah has said, whoever harms a friend of mine, I have indeed declared war against him. Narrated by Al-Bukhari. It is also narrated in the two authentic books, Al-Bukhari and Muslim, that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever prays the dawn prayers in congregation will be in the guardianship of Allah. So let not, so let not yourselves be liable to being questioned by Allah regarding that under his guardianship. <laughs> 